can't find one requirement that actually complies with the event policy. Last year, board members said the good cause for extended hours was because that's when the operator makes his money. When do residents get benefit of good cause? Are they paid up in full since the last carnival? No, ma'am. And how much is due? Uh, it's uh, just under 30000 That's from the... Um... The spring break before. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the money is owed to the city. Okay, so then this is not a CRA issue technically. So this board is going to approve a temporary use permit to a uh, fair owner who owes us over $30,000. Promises mean nothing. We were promised that we would have the money in full. Two weeks ago, they did not have the money when this was on the agenda. They still owe over $30,000. So I'm going to make an amendment, and my amendment is going to be the that died. No second. Call the roll. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Margate CRA um, Community Redevelopment Agency Special Meeting. Today is Monday, September 30th, 2024. Time is now 3.35 p.m. You want to call the roll, please? Board member Simone, here. Board member Osario, here. Board member Schwartz, here. Vice Chair Caggiano, present. Chair Rosano, here. Please rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I was made aware today that the special meeting didn't have a public discussion or public comment or whatever you want to call it. So at this time, I'm going to open it up to public discussion. If anybody wants to speak on anything that is not on the agenda, you will have three minutes to do so. I had gotten the same phone calls and I was going to mention it to you that someone had said that that part was missing. I was, so thank I was, you. I wasn't aware of that. I mean, I, yeah, so. right. All right. So I apologize for that. So if anybody would like to speak, if there's anybody on Zoom. Is there anybody on Zoom? Anybody on Zoom? <clears throat> you have one person on Zoom. All right. One person. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear us? Hello? Yeah. Hello. It's very inconvenient that this is being heard in the middle of the day. To start, there needs to be a review of the application process. This is regarding the, uh, the temporary use permit agenda. There needs to be a review of the application process to see how invalid applications, such as this one, make it through the, to the board for approval while not meeting the event policy requirements or city code. Somebody somehow directed to accept non-compliant applications it said these events bring fun and happiness to a lot of people. Is that only achievable by not adhering to the CRA event policy or city codes? Looking at the application, I can't find one requirement that actually complies with the event policy. The line immediately below the application title reads, please review Margaret CRA event policy prior to completion of this form. Copy attached. That means the applicant was fully aware of the event policy. And despite the application was completed with the organization and address not being located in Margate. Although the application states the organization must be a business, nonprofit organization, or religious institution located in the city of Margate, same as the event policy, which the applicant was to read. The event policy states a carnival shall be permitted to operate a maximum of 14 days or two weekends, and the requested operation dates are for 17 days or three weekends, one extra weekend than policy allows. The application states event setup and takedown is allowed for three days each per city ordinance, but yet the event setup is 11 days and takedown is seven days, not in accordance with the city ordinance. 35 consecutive days in total, while code permits no more than 21 days. Do you think your actions as a CRA supersede any city code or ordinance? It doesn't. Lastly, the hours of operation. Event policy states all operations must cease by 10 p.m. weeknights and 11 p.m. on weekends. Yet the application has operation hours of 12 a.m. weeknights, 1 a.m. weekends. Page two of the policy allows the CRA to extend times for good cause. Time does an operating hours, not duration. Last year, board members said the good cause for extended hours was because that's when the operator makes his money. The CRA reserves the right by majority to extend the times of approval events mm -hmm. for good cause. Mm -hmm. 
So what is being considered good cause? I think that's in the I think we had the fairholder or the, the, yeah, the participant. I explained last time that that's where the revenue is, but that you know, after a certain time they break even, and after that, right. it's profit for the evening. So it was about uh, taking it worth their <clears throat> And I remember they are a business paying a large amount of money to the city, the CRA, um, for the police, the fire. No, I, okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. Trying to make money. When do residents get benefit of good cause? Residents have put up with noise late at night and into early morning. On March 29th of this year, a resident posted to a Margate Facebook group asking, quote, why is their fare allowed to continue late past quiet okay. hours? Is, is the fair the fare is located right next to residential apartments that pay $2,300 a month that have to deal with this fare multiple times a year? If the person tries to put their three-year-old to bed past a few nights and cannot because of the blasting music, people screaming, men yelling over microphones and sirens and foghorns going off every five minutes. They can't get their child to bed until after 11 p.m. most nights. And that's insane. What can be done? Why is it allowed to continue every night past 10 p.m. quiet hours? Thank you very much. Is there anybody else on Zoom? Yeah. Okay. With that, we're going to close public discussion. We're going to go to our first item, item number one, discussion and possible action. David. Uh, thank you, David Tulsa, CRA attorney. This is discussion and possible action related to the approval of a temporary use agreement between the Margate Community Redevelopment Agency and Hildebrand Amusement Rights, Inc. to hold the fair at Margate on Margate CRA owned properties. What is the wish of the board? Motion to approve. Second. All right. Um, board member Schwartz. I guess I will ask Mr. Rydell a couple of questions since he's here for the petition. Absolutely, Josh Rydell, 111 Southwest 6th Street on behalf of Hildebrand Amusement, I think. I will state my normal statement about some of the times, especially since that second week kids are back at school. Um, people are going, if they're home for Thanksgiving, that time is over and that maybe we can close it down before midnight. I'm also going to ask because it's getting longer and longer. I noticed the maximum setup day is three. I know we usually allow more, but this time it's again to set it up. Why? So traditionally, and this is something kind of that's gone on, you know, with your city manager's office, when we've set up and broken down, if there's a day or two layover for potentially one truck, there's been situations where one uh, semi truck trailer has just been on the property, hasn't been a problem, it's just waiting for it to be picked up or dropped off. So just to be in full compliance, we are asking for a little more time, we don't anticipate, we, we believe we're fully set up within, you know, with five days max, but we want to account for any trailers or anything like that coming in completely out of the way, not uh, causing a nuisance or anything. And then regarding the times, uh, board member Schwartz, obviously, I still have to go before the market, obviously, all of you in your different capacity uh, in a publicly noticed meeting in, in the evening in regarding uh, the extension of the duration of the dates for your code, as well as the extension of the time for your code. So those two issues, uh, hopefully, we do get, get to bring before you. Uh, sitting in your commission seats rather than your CRA seats. So this is actually just the use of the property. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Is that it? Yeah. I, well, he knows how I feel about the time. So as he said, uh, yeah. that doesn't change for me, especially that extra week where kids are back at school. Board member Simone. I have a question for the executive director. Are they paid up in full since the last carnival? No, ma'am. And that was going to be a recommendation that I provided to you all that um, if you all do consider this, that you make it contingent upon um, the fair uh, paying the balance that's due prior to this going before the commission for final approval. And how much is due? Uh, it's uh, just under 30000 Thank you, and, and that's from the, the, that's from the um, the spring break before. Yes, ma'am. Is that a joint? All right. At this point, I will open it up to the public. There's a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. 
Margate resident. You all know how I feel about the affair, but guess what? I'm gonna shock you right now. I'm asking that maybe the Hildebrandt amusement, um, whatever it is, and the CRA look into and try to meet to giving our homeless kids that are in our school system and our kids in need a time at the fair. Let them have a ticket, a ride band, and probably a food voucher so that these kids could enjoy the fair just like our kids could enjoy the fair. I think it's kind of sad that we have <clears throat> kids that are homeless, living in cars and everywhere else, but I still think that we need to acknowledge them and give them a happy time. Just give them a day at the fair and that's it. If you all can, please, and Hildebrandt, if they would please consider this, then it's a great thing to have. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Schwartz. I absolutely agree with you because, and I know that the mayor, the chair of the CRA has given out tickets. I've given out tickets, but I think that's a, a, that's a forgotten population. And I think that's a great idea. And I would guess that there would be agreement to do that. Absolutely. I think it's a great, I think it's a great idea. Uh, every year, traditionally, we, we drop off a number of tickets uh, admission tickets for all the athletes and the students of of the month. If, if somebody on staff, if Miss Rody, I see her over there, if she's able to give me a number of additional that you want to voucher out, maybe in talking to your school principals and things like that. that that's a, a very uh, great generally the SRO contribution. Way. Generally, the SROs at each school will know because they do when we do shop with a, a hero for the for uh, Christmas time. So, I also, great idea. I also know Qantas is a five hundred one c three, and they do a lot. Um, with homeless and or children that are close to homeless, they bring food to the schools on a weekly mm -hmm. basis. So I'm sure they know some families, Ron Huffman um, will probably, and that's the last $500 of my $2,000 that we tried um, giving to them to give to uh, food to children. So I'm sure they would know as well, but thank you for the offer and good, good idea. Yep, thank you. Yeah, them as well. Yeah. All right, board member Simone. So this board is going to approve a temporary use permit to a uh, fair owner who owes us over $30,000. And I guess promises me nothing because I remember last fair that we were promised that we would have the money in full. And they've had plenty of time I know two weeks ago, they did not have the money when this was on the agenda. And now two weeks passed, they still owe over $30,000. So how is this board approving this agreement with that kind of money being owed and having been promised that we would be made whole? I don't, I don't understand how this board can vote in favor of this. I can only speak for myself, but I'm going to say that it does have to go back before the city commission. So at that point, it could be denied. It should be denied at this board as well. Don't blame it on the city commission. We're the CRA. So it should be denied here and denied from the uh, city commission, in my opinion. Kale, is the money that's owed, is it is owed to the CRA? No, uh, the money is owed to the city. Okay, so then this is not a CRA issue technically. Board member Arcerio. Um, to add on to what you said, um, Mr. Chair, we could also make it part of the condition of approval. Because I, as much as I love Mr. Bass and, and I support the fair, um, the money is an issue and we should be made whole on that prior to the uh, prior to opening of the fair. Board member Schwartz. So I'm going to make an amendment. And my amendment is going to be that it does not come before the city commission until such time as that money is uh, reimbursed so that that way it's over, it's done with, and that it 
be incorporated the next time that says there's a, whether it's 30 days, whatever it is, that that gets taken care of. So if this should come before us again at any other time, this is no longer a conversation. Is Joanne, what you, want to do? you understand what I'm saying? I understand and I totally disagree. I don't think anybody who owes us money, it should be contingent upon him paying. He's had plenty of time to pay. And this is not the first time that he has been late in paying us. Okay. So enough is enough already. Well, that would be my amendment that it doesn't even make it to the city commission unless all outstanding debts are paid. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't make it to the city commission, it doesn't go any further. That died. No second. Are you still up early? I, I, I oh, was no, going to say, I, I, I didn't second it here. I, I like the chair said, I, I think this is a city thing, but I'll be the first to say that at the city level, I would not approve it unless we we're paid in full or had some type of condition on there. But it doesn't, I don't see why we should just stop the process tonight. I'm not stopping the process. I'm just simply saying it doesn't go any further unless that's done because clearly if it comes in front of the city commission, I would expect the city commission to vote absolutely no. Correct. So why not tell the person in advance if you don't do this, don't even do the other thing, don't get embarrassed and don't embarrass us. Well, I think we're telling them that. <laughs> I'm sure they're hearing that now, but I just simply was making it provision. But if you don't want to do it, that's okay. All right, public, is there anybody else that would like to speak on this item? Call the roll. Board Member Simone? Nope. Board Member Osterio? Yes. Board Member Schwartz? Because you didn't like my condition, no. Board Member Schwartz, yes? No. 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 Vice, Vice Chair Caggiano? Yes. Chair Rosano? Yes. Motion passes three to two.